Um, and so how we're going to start is there is a lot of misinformation um, in the healthcare world about brain health, about early onset dementias, and about Alzheimer's. So I'm hoping to dispel some of those myths and give you some practical tips you can use to protect your brains, okay? So a little bit about me. Um, I run an integrative health clinic in San Jose, um, specializing in functional neurology and functional medicine. All that really means is uh, I work with really complex cases of people who have chronic disease and neurological issues, and I help them in a non-pharmaceutical way, okay? Because chronic diseases like high blood pressure and heart disease and diabetes, and even cancer to a degree, are not diseases that lack medication, but they're usually diseases of lifestyle choices and diet toy choices. Um, and so that's how I help those people. Typically, I'm the last line of resort. Um, either medications have not worked, um, or they don't wanna take the next step to a stronger medication and want to make the necessary lifestyle changes. And that's how I help them, okay? Um, let's see. And this is especially important um, in regards to brain health because all the latest research regarding brain health is saying that pharmaceuticals have no answer right now, but the most effective treatments are nutritionally based and lifestyle based, okay? And we're gonna expand a little bit more about that. All right, so a quick overview, basically, we're gonna talk about some of the, the current medical standard of care for an early dementia diagnosis or an Alzheimer's diagnosis. Um, and we're gonna dispel some of the myths that exist there. I'm gonna talk about some of the latest and greatest research that has come out within the last five years on brain health. And then um, we're gonna give you some practical tips on what you can do today to improve your brain health. Okay? Okay? All right, so the current medical standard of um, Alzheimer's care is basically this. The understanding is that Alzheimer's is a progressive inflammatory disease with no known treatment or prevention, okay? Um, early diagnosis consists of waiting and watching a person as they progress through the disease. There is no proactive steps, right? If you've had a loved one who's been diagnosed with either dementia or early Alzheimer's or cognitive decline, the doctors almost always tell you, We'll wait and watch it. Maybe we'll do a brain scan every six months or a year. Um, but we'll wait and see how it goes, okay? That's the worst possible advice that can be given. The worst possible advice. Um, and late interventions, so essentially once the person has gotten bad enough to where they can no longer function day to day, um, then medications are given which usually only work short term. Right. So I want to introduce this concept of a pre-Alzheimer's diagnosis. If you imagine you go to your doctor, your primary care doctors, and you're told you have, you're pre-diabetic, right? Your blood sugar levels are too high. What does your doctor tell you? You, you need to lose weight, eat less, and exercise more, right? Because if nothing has changed, you will eventually become full diabetic, correct? We're losing you. And so the same thing, the same thing happens with an early Alzheimer's or a dementia diagnosis, right? If nothing is changed in your lifestyle or your nutrition, the inevitable <coughs> will happen to full-blown Alzheimer's, right? Um, in the same way, mammograms are recommended for women at a certain age to screen for breast cancer. Colonoscopies are recommended at age 50 for colon cancer. But why is there no brain assessment done at age 40 or 50, right? It's very important to track your mental progress to know when there's a slight decline, you can make a change immediately, okay? So at the end of this, I'm going, to, I'm going to make a super cool offer for you guys where you'll be able to do that. Okay, so the latest research on brain health, which has again come out 
in the last five to six years. Um, so Alzheimer's is a progressive neurological disease. Can you guys hear me better this way? Okay, I think the battery's failing. That's all right. I'll get closer to you guys. Put it right here. So basically, Alzheimer's is a progressive neurological disease. Yes, um, but it is dictated by a combination of your genetics, the environment you live in, and you're exposed to and your history of concussions or head traumas. So if you were a football player, wow. That's me. or a soccer player, yeah. and the most common way to have a concussion outside of sports is actually a car accident, a whiplash car accident. So you can get hit at 15 miles an hour and your head ricochets forward and back. Guess what your brain is doing? It's banging the front, banging the back, and banging the front again. All right? Yeah. Big bummer. So when the risk factors are identified and removed, an optimal environment for healing the brain can be achieved. So what does that actually mean? Yeah. Tell us. Two, three years ago, this medical researcher, Dr. Dale Bredesen, published a research paper where he was able to reverse memory loss in Alzheimer's patients in nine out of 10 people. He published his research paper. Last year, he published his book on how he did it, okay? And the main treatment was nutrition, supplement-based, and lifestyle-based, okay? Nine out of 10 people. And he's publishing a follow-up where, where he did it in 100 people, okay? This book is for the average reader. It's a very good book. If you have any interest, pick it up. It's called, actually, it's on the handout I gave you. So on the front of that paper, there's a, a section that's labeled resources. I have the title and the author of the book there, okay? Now basically what the researcher identified was there were 40 different variables that could contribute to Alzheimer's, 40. And they were unique to each person. So each person had a different treatment program. But they all revolved around nutrition, supplementation, and lifestyle modification. Okay? But each treatment was unique. That's very important to know. So a healthy brain needs a few basic things. It needs energy in the form of good food, good nutrition, and it needs adequate amounts of healthy fats. Fat and cholesterol are vital building blocks to brain health. Okay? There are certain medications designed to lower cholesterol levels and they can be very beneficial, but when cholesterol is too low, your risk for dementia and Alzheimer's goes up. Number two, a healthy brain needs activation, stimulation in the form of either physical exercise and or brain exercise, which can be in the form of word puzzles, number puzzles, memory games, but the trick is, you have to play the games you're bad at, right? If you play games you're good at, you're already good at them, your brain's not gonna grow and improve. You gotta play the games you're bad at and get better at them. That's how the brain learns. Number three, the brain needs good oxygen and blood flow, okay? So if you're anemic, if you're iron deficient, if you're B vitamin deficient, the brain lacks the basic building blocks to function or to carry oxygen. Um, if you have cardiovascular disease, if you have high blood pressure, you compromise the efficiency of blood flow to the brain. Okay, so it's very important to minimize those risks. Um, number four, a healthy brain needs a non-toxic environment. So, has anybody heard of the term type 3 diabetes? Mm -hmm. 
Basically, it's a term that's been used and thrown around to describe diabetes of the brain, which means your brain now lacks the ability to use sugar as energy. You become diabetic to the brain. And I just read an article this morning that said you can become diabetic to your brain without even being diabetic to the rest of your body. So if you have chronically high blood sugar levels but are still not diabetic, your brain can still suffer from that. Okay? And the last thing, a healthy brain needs healthy hormone levels. This is especially important for women, postmenopausal, when estrogen levels drop too low, something needs to be done, and there are supplements and precursors that can be taken to help natural estrogen production, but that's very important. Equally as important for men, men can experience something called andropause, where after 40, 50, testosterone levels start to plummet, and a male can become estrogen dominant, okay? Many men don't know that. And hormone levels, cholesterol, going back to cholesterol, cholesterol is a basic building block for hormones. So again, if your cholesterol are, levels are too low, you lack the capacity to even make hormones, right? So that's another problem. Um, now, some more of the latest research coming out is saying that the brain cannot function independently of your digestive system. There is something called the brain-gut axis, or the brain-gut connection, which means in order to have a healthy brain, you have to have a healthy digestive tract. If you have a bad brain, you will most likely have, or already have, a destroyed digestive system, and vice versa. Okay, so things like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's can actually begin with a poor functioning digestive system. Does that make sense? That's why nutrition is so key to the health of your brain. Not only for good energy, but for healthy functioning digestive tracts. Okay? Now, some of the early warning signs of memory loss and Alzheimer's can be seen 10 to 15 years before ever being diagnosed. Okay, did you know that? Many are very subtle <coughs> signs and symptoms, but they can be very noticeable and present in a trained healthcare provider who knows how to identify them, okay? Some of the early warning signs are depression, apathy, brain fog, or brain fatigue, and this is typically brain fatigue with tasks you're used to doing all the time. It can be reading a book. You notice you get sleepy when you read a book faster than you used to or you don't retain the information you read from a book like you used to. It can be from driving. You go out for a short drive and you get back and you're exhausted because all that visual stimulus to the brain, the brain can no longer handle it. Okay, it's early warning signs. Um, chronic unresolved constipation is a huge problem, right? We know that the brain cannot function if a digestive tract does not function properly. So chronic constipation, especially if it doesn't respond to medication or added fiber, can be a sign of, of a neurological issue, okay? The brain controls digestive function. So when the brain starts to fail, so does the digestive tract. And the last one here, the loss of, an, of your internal clock. So what I mean by that is everyone knows if you have a, a nine to five job and for 20 years you've had to wake up at 7 a.m. to get ready for work and leave, even on weekends and maybe after you retire, your internal clock continues to wake you up at 7 a.m., at least for a while, right? Because it's been trained to wake up at that same time every day, okay? As time goes by, the part of the brain that controls our internal clock is also the part of the brain that controls short-term memory and converts it into long-term memory. So when one fails, we know the other one is starting to fail as well, okay? So when you, experience, when you have a loved one or you yourself realize that you can no longer fall asleep at a decent hour. You're up till one, two in the morning watching TV and then you're waking up at 10, 11, 12 o'clock. That's a problem. 
your internal clock is no longer in sync with day, uh, day and night. Okay, early warning sign. Okay, so one of the common questions I get um, from people I work with in my office is, I'll explain this to them. Usually we'll order some blood work, we'll check hormone levels, things like that. And I sit down and explain this all to them. And one of the biggest things I get is, why doesn't my doc doctor know this? Why hasn't my doctor explained this to me? And I had a, I, I had a professor tell me once, and this is a direct quote, we as healthcare providers are all doing the best we can with the information that has been provided to us, with the schooling and training we've had, okay? The truth is, most primary care doctors are not trained in nutrition. They're not trained to, to recognize environmental factors that can contribute to dementia or Alzheimer's. They're not trained in the use of supplements and vitamins and herbs to improve your health. Um, and most primary care doctors are not necessarily trained in neurology either. They took like a six week <coughs> class of neurology 20 years ago um, that they don't remember, okay? And then they send you to a... Uh, the specialist. specialist. They send you to a specialist. And that's the other issue, right? Our healthcare system revolves around specialists. But the brain is not a specialized thing, right? I just explained to you the brain function um, depends on healthy digestive function and healthy hormone levels and a healthy thyroid. So now we, we're looking at five, four or five different specialists for one condition, but that's not how our healthcare system works, right? You get referred to the neurologist to take care of your brain, the endocrinologist for hormone issues, the gastroenterologist for digestive issues, but nobody puts them together, right? Nobody completes that circle. And that's exactly what I do in my office for patients one-on-one, -on -one, and then they come back with, how come I've never been told this before in my life, okay? So it's, it's very frustrating and um, confusing for, for patients as well, okay? Um, and the other problem is insurance doesn't typically pay for comprehensive screening tests like this, okay? You have to have a diagnosable reason most of the time to order a test, and if you don't, they won't pay for it, unfortunately, okay? Um, and, um, okay, so I have a question for all of you. Given that I just gave you this information, information that has been published in the last five to six years, how long would you guess it takes for uh, medical research to make it into common medical practice in a doctor's office? Any guesses? 15 to 10 to 15. All right, pretty good. We got 10 to 15 to 20. So the last research paper I read said about 20, 20 years. But based on trends in the past, um, I think it's more like 40 to 50 years, okay? The tobacco companies were able to fool everyone in government and uh, researchers for 40 years before they were finally able to conclude cancer, I mean, uh, smoking really does cause cancer. So given those trends, um, I would guess 40 to 50 years, okay? So this information has been published in the last five to six years, which means it won't become viable treatment options by your primary care doctors for another 20 to 30, 40 years, okay? So a couple take home tips for you. And I, I, I summarized these on the front of the flyer I gave you, um, but you can take notes if you like. Sleep, sleeping eight to nine hours a night is vital to brain health. And at night, not during the day, and not split up during the day and night, eight to nine hours straight of sleep a night is very important because what happens is at night, our hormones do a unique thing to where our brain actually heals itself. It actually clears out metabolic debris while we sleep. So it's very important. It's important to sleep with all the lights and technology and television off because that can also affect the quality of our sleep, okay? And if you have sleep apnea, it's important for you to use your CPAP machines 
I know a lot of people don't like them, they're uncomfortable, they're weird, but if you have sleep apnea and you're not sleeping with it, you're depriving your brain of oxygen throughout the entire night. That's one of the five factors we need for good brain health, right? So that's very important. And so I like to use the example of my mother-in-law who is the epitome of not sleeping properly. She falls asleep probably around one in the morning with her iPad in her hand, television running, and all the lights on, okay? She wakes up a few hours later, realizes everything's on, and turns everything off. That's the worst way to sleep because you never get good quality sleep and it's disrupted, okay? Now, second tip, eat good quality, organic, if possible, food, okay? And it should, your food choices should revolve basically around protein, fat, and vegetables, okay? Avoid sweets and sugars as much as you can. I know it's very challenging. Sweets and sugars and your <coughs> breads and pastas and rice, okay? You want to try to minimize the baby steps is the easiest way. Minimize the portion size, a little less, a little less. Then you get into the habit of just filling your plate with vegetables and healthy proteins and healthy fats because healthy fats are equally as important. Michelle's gonna expand more on, um, on that topic, okay? Keep your blood sugar under control, okay? If you're pre-diabetic or already diabetic, and especially if you're diabetic and being medicated and your blood sugar is still out of control, it's a bad, bad sign, okay? A lot of that can be controlled, yes? Okay. We're going to talk about that. Michelle will talk more about that for you and give you examples. Good question. Good question. Because typically we're told a no fat diet is the best, right? But the brain cannot function properly without a fat in the diet. Okay? Um, keep blood sugar under control. Infections, especially oral infections, can leak into the bloodstream and infect the brain. So keeping good oral hygiene is equally as important, okay? Um, exercise physically, like we talked about. 30 to 45 minutes of physical exercise. 30 to 45 minutes of brain exercise. Now the easiest way to do this is to learn a new skill, preferably a physical skill. And if it incorporates music and timing and things like that, it's even more beneficial. So the best could be dancing. Take a dance class, a ballroom class, a salsa class. That can be the best thing for your brain because you get both physical and mental exercise. Learn to knit, learn a new skill, okay? Um, and then play word puzzles, number puzzles, whatever you're bad at doing, play. Don't play for money though because <laughs> um, okay, and take a good quality multivitamin. Now, Michelle will expand more on multivitamins. Okay, I know a lot of medical doctors or primary care doctors don't like supplements, um, but there's a lot of research that says supplements can be very, very beneficial, especially if you're not eating enough or eating enough of the right foods. Okay, Michelle will expand more on that. Um, an omega-3 fish oil, supplementing with omega-3 fish oils, very important. And then last, um, 20 to 30 minutes of sunlight a day, okay? That, that's to help vitamin D levels, but it's also to help your internal clock. If you can get outdoors, spend some time in the sun, you can help train your clock when it's day, when it's afternoon, when it's late evening, okay? So get outdoors as often as you can, especially when the weather's nice like this, okay? All right, so take home message just to close here. Omega. Do not, do not wait and watch an early dementia or Alzheimer's diagnosis, okay? That is the standard of medical care, but it is the worst thing you can do. The sooner you act, the more improvement you can make. You can slow the progression of the disease and in many cases reverse the symptoms of memory loss and the research says up to now, sustained up to five years, okay? 
This research is so new, he still doesn't know how long the changes last, but up to now they've lasted up to five years. And that's people who had to quit their jobs because they were no longer functional, who were going back to work. Okay? Um, the sooner you act, the better. Early warning signs are, are noticeable 10 to 15 years before a diagnosis. Um, and get evaluated by a functional neurologist or a functional medicine practitioner because they are trained to recognize these different systems and how they all relate to each other and how they all influence the brain. Okay? On the hand that I, give you, I gave you, on the right side, there's a resource links um, area. Those resource links are essentially, um, it's a website where you can find providers trained in exactly everything I talked about.